Why doesn't my 3D model have textures? It does, just not in the way you'd expect. Hey and welcome to Solving FX. Ever since After Effects 24 introduced 3D models directly in the timeline, there's been a whole new discipline of 3D to learn. I mean, you're watching this, so you know the issues. I've collected four examples to work through with you. There's three model file types AE can import, OBJ, GLB, and FBX. OBJ files are the OG 3D file. They're written in plain text. You can open them in Notepad and see what they're doing. Textures are controlled by MTL files, which store colors and links to image files. OBJ files were created for the Wavefront program back in 1990. It's one of those legacy formats that's still around because it just works. GLB files came out of VR and AR technologies and have proven useful for web-based sharing as all the textures are wrapped up in the model, unlike OBJ with its separate files. They're optimized for size. FBX is a proprietary 3D file, so theoretically there could be license issues. It's not like Adobe to suffer from those. Realistically though, FBX is arguably the industry standard, and OBJ files can't contain animations either. Let's assume you have a Blender model, like this awesome Voyager from Alex3D. As I go to open the model just before I click open, I'll click on the cogwheel and uncheck Load UI. This keeps the layout consistent. And this model has an animation. I'll switch to the Animation tab and bring the timeline back to zero. There we go. And to see the colouring, I'll select Viewport Shading. There, that's what we want. So now I'll just go to File, Export, and there's Wavefront OBJ, GLTF, which is GLB, and FBX. If you don't see a GLTF option, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and search for GLTF and add it. You might also want to enable FBX while you're here too. When you go to Export, for OBJ, make sure to check Materials and the PBR extension in there. For GLB and FBX, there is a checkbox for animations. If you include these, they'll appear as options in the After Effects timeline. If your model imports with no textures like this, then there's a couple of possible causes. The first is that the image textures haven't been included alongside the model. Alex3D provides textures in a separate download, so you just need to have these alongside. Sometimes the model has textures within it, so it won't be separate. But if you wanted to make a minor change, such as the Starship's name, you can go to File, External Data, Unpack Resources. In cases where the model appears purple, in Blender, that means there are missing images. If the model looks right in Blender when viewed with viewport shading, but still exports as white or solid colors, then the most likely explanation is that the model is using procedural materials. None of the model file types After Effects can import can support procedural materials. That is, textures created within the software instead of image files. When that happens, we need to bake the material into a texture. Baking is complicated, and to be honest, if you're looking at downloaded models with more than one material, it won't solve your problem. I'll put a pin in that for later. For now, here's a rock. If I expand it in the outliner panel, you can see it has a modifier and a material. Modifiers are used to add hair or duplicate geometry or mirror it and many other things inside Blender, but they don't export for other software. There is an option to apply modifiers when exporting, but I've found it doesn't always work. So, first things first, I'll apply the modifier from this option. If I now switch to the Shading tab, you can see the material is using noise to generate a fractal surface. If I now go to Add, Texture, Image Texture, a new Image Texture node pops up. If I now select the new option and give it a name, and you can see this is going to generate a 1K image. Probably fine, but for more detail I could increase it. If you want to stick to optimized sizes, then you can click into the width and add a times 2 to get 2048, and then do the same for the height. Make sure this node is highlighted, then go to Render Properties, 
the little camera icon. Make sure the render engine is the cycles renderer and scroll down to bake and expand it. Set the bake type to diffuse and uncheck direct and indirect, which refers to lighting. And then click bake. If you get an error message that says no active image, make sure you run through all the steps of the image texture node. And when it's done, you should see a representation of the image in a UV map. We're not quite done though, because we're still linking the original material to the rock. So in the shading area for the material, find the material output. Click on the pin for surface and drag it off the node to break the link. And I have to do the same for displacement. And then I'll drag this over to my image texture node and then click and drag from the color pin of the image texture to the surface pin of material output. Then I can export my model by going to File, Export, GLB. But you'll have seen both in Blender and After Effects that all the nooks and crannies are gone. Well, we can bake this in the same way. Create another image texture node and make it a new image. Then with it selected, in the Bake Type dropdown, choose Normal. Bake the new image. But then, this time, we'll unlink the principled BSDF node, link our two image textures to Color and Normal, and then link its BSDF node to the material output. Anyone else hear BSDF and think North Sea Fairies? <laughs> no, that's just me then. One issue you may have with native Blender files that you want to export for After Effects is that they may contain modifiers and multiple UV maps and multiple materials. Honestly, my advice in this case is to use Blender to animate and render and bring that into After Effects for final compositing. I have a whole playlist of tutorials on learning just enough Blender to get you started with learning the interface, animating and rendering. They do have the annoying cartoon in the corner, but at least you don't have to put it with my face. If you do insist on exporting models into After Effects, check to see if they have these spanner or wrench icons. These are modifiers, and as I've said, I found it best to apply these modifiers before you attempt to export. So with the modifier selected, I'll go to this dropdown and choose Apply, and then I'll do that for each modifier until the spanners are gone. But with this model, I also have the problem of multiple material and textures. After applying the modifiers, it is a case of selecting each material in turn, making a new image texture, and with the model selected, baking it and then linking in. And even then you might run into problems with normals not being aligned correctly. At this point, it's worth looking again at animating in Blender. You'll need to decide for yourself if it's better to learn Blender's UV mapping or Blender's animation. Mm -hmm.